On this video, we're going to be looking at just-in-time stock management. Now, here's a lovely picture of where I used to work many years ago uh, in WH Smiths in Romford. Now, I worked in the warehouse there, so I was basically dealing with, with stock, getting stock down from the warehouse onto the shop floor. If you look on that picture, the warehouse is directly above the store. So broadly speaking, for every square meter of selling space, there was a square meter of storage space. And the size of the store, it basically went in an L shape and it was uh, twice as large as it is now, sort of. Now remember that traditional stock control systems are called just in case. In other words, we hold stock just in case there is a buyer. And one of the things I noticed during my time there, so I was there for three years, is that when I left, an awful lot of the items in the stockroom were exactly the same as when I joined. They hadn't been sold in three years. Not only hadn't they been sold, they hadn't actually made it down onto the shop floor. Customers literally did not know that they were there. What a waste that was. Along with many other stores, uh, WH Smith's Romford uh, went over to a just-in-time type technique. And if you look at the picture of that store today, you will see that there isn't a warehouse anymore, that the space above the selling space is selling space. The warehouse virtually doesn't exist apart from a small office. So what they've done is they've now put that all onto if you like half of the site but they've doubled the height uh, and now there is no stock room so stuff goes direct from their deliveries straight onto the shop floor so they've moved from a just-in-case type system to a just-in-time type system they've saved land they've saved money in stock uh, and overall that was probably a good thing for them to do, even though it would have meant that I wouldn't have had a job now. Just in time is an aspect of lean production. Now, lean production originated in Japan. Um, a lot of the uh, production type techniques that Western firms use now derive from Japan. Uh, Tesco use uh, Kaizen groups, uh, for example. And the aim of lean production is to focus on cutting waste, for example, waste stock, while maintaining or hopefully improving the quality. The two techniques that we look at on the course are just in time stock management, where the aim is to minimize stock levels at all stages of the production process and thus minimize costs. And Kaizen, which is to do with continuous improvement, bit by bit improvement, which you look at uh, on another video. As the name implies, just in time is where we get in the stock just in time for manufacture. We virtually eliminate buffer stocks. And the pluses for that are pretty obvious. It means that our stock holding costs go right down. It means that we need less working capital so we can use that money elsewhere in the business. It means that we have less obsolete stock or ruined stock or stock. Say in the case of WH Smith, just stick it sitting up there in the warehouse with the associated costs on security and insurance that go with that. Also, of course, it means less unsold stock because we have very low stock levels. If you ain't gonna sell it, it ain't gonna be there. Well, this being an A level, and we want some counterbalance, if there's pluses, there's gonna be some minuses. Um, an adjusting time system leaves very little room for error. What if those supplies that we need now are held up by an hour, two hours a day? Uh, in other words, what if the lead times are higher than we wanted them to be? It means that we're going to be very reliant upon our suppliers. It gives the suppliers a bit more power. Um, so you have to have good working relationships with your suppliers. You can't try to dominate your suppliers or shift from one supplier to another uh, supplier, which is what many large firms have often done in the past. You need those suppliers to deliver for you now. Um, what happens if uh, you get a sudden increase in unexpected orders? Think about during the COVID epidemic, there was a sudden run in many stores on loo rolls. Now, for a few weeks, you could not get hold of a loo roll, which could have been quite a, 
drastic, shall we say, in a number of households. So if you get an unexpected order and you're running very, very low stock levels, how do you deal with that? Um, delivery delays can cause production to stop. JIT stands for just in time. People who don't like JIT call it just in trucks because those stocks are sitting there on the M25 or, or the M62 on a huge traffic jam. Uh, and they can't actually make your factories. There are very, very high initial setup costs. Think about what I was saying about our suppliers. Now, often with JIT systems, we link, we integrate our computer systems to those of our suppliers so that when we need stock, a, an order is instantaneously generated. We could well be placing an order at nine o'clock in the morning that we want delivered at 11.30. So we need to integrate our computer systems and that is gonna be both expensive and very, very complex. So let's finish uh, by looking at JLR who employ very extensive JIT manufacture. Now JLR are one of Britain's two largest car manufacturers. They've got a revenue of around about £26 billion a year and they make an operating profit of about £1.5 billion. Those nerds who like mathematical neatness, their sales from the UK are split into five almost equal parts. So about a fifth of it goes to the EU, a fifth goes to the UK, a fifth goes to China, a fifth goes to America and a fifth goes to the rest of the world. They'll obviously employ a flow production technique, but the customization occurs at the end of the process. So that's where things like uh, your specialist radios or your seats are put in because that's where customers have a certain amount uh, of choice. So if we look at the seats, they will place an order with their seat suppliers, as I say, literally in the morning, and they will expect those seat supplies to be there at exactly the moment that they want them. Obviously, there is the danger that they could be in trucks in an unexpected traffic jam. But if the seat suppliers don't deliver, say they're 10 minutes late, they could get a five figure fine for being uh, 10 minutes late because the just-in-time production techniques, it, it requires those, those goods to be there just in time. If those seats aren't there, then the entire production line could potentially come to a halt. If we look at that by Porter's five forces, well, customers have an awful lot of power over car manufacturers because they have an awful lot of choice. But if you're a seat supplier for JLR in the West Midlands, there aren't any other uh, car firms that you could supply to. So JLR have an awful lot of power over the seat suppliers, which is why they're able to impose those five figure fines. But these suppliers must deliver on time. And JLR do have a close working relationship with those suppliers. Their uh, computer systems are integrated because they need to be. Um, and I think that's a reasonable example of how just-in-time production is used for one of our largest manufacturing organisations. And that's it for Just-in-Time.